In his speech at the CIBN end of year conference, the governor of the CBN, Yamik, had also hinted at the need for the banks to brace for recapitalization, considering the significant loss in the value of the current capitalization and the capital required for the envisioned $1 trillion economy. Analysts say the approach should instead be of incentives and not coercion. Well, the strong performance of the banking sector in the market would suggest an attractive return on the banking index. There seems not to be a concern for the bigger banks as investors would willingly commit resources given the lucrative opportunities in the sector. I have international finance and economic analyst Mukhtar Mohammed joining me now to discuss further. Good morning to you, Mukhtar. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Good morning, Justice. Thank you for having me this morning. All right. Mukta, you know, it's been 19 years. I remember in 2004 when there was so much talk about uh, banking, uh, bank and capitalization, and uh, the market, the uh, uh, capital market was booming. Well, it's been 19 years now since the CPN announced banks to recapitalize to $25 billion. Remember what happened with acquisitions, mergers, and marriages of misfits, if I must say. But first of all, how do you react to this uh, development? Well, just in very good development, if you are in uh, the tier one bank, very, um, might be a turbulent time for the tier two banks. Um, so in as much I'm excited about it, like you said, um, we did this 19 years ago when we moved from 2 billion to 25 billion, that was over 1,200% increment. So after that time, uh, we've seen banks recapitalize, come, came to the market, We've seen shareholders' firms um, expand, especially in the tier one bank. So, like you said in your report, I don't think the tier one bank has anything to fear. Maybe the tier two banks may have some challenges, not all of them. But again, some of them have been proactive. They're already trying to assess the market before um, this um, policy came out from CBN. Up to now, we're not clear yet about how the policy is going to work. So we're still waiting for um, direction from the CBN. What would be the minimum um, capital um, requirement of the banks? Um, some of the tier one banks are doing a profit of over one trillion naira. Um, also, some of them, in terms of dollars, have recapitalized even to the tune of over five hundred million dollars. So it depends on um, what um, the CBN governor will be looking at, or the CBN will be looking at. We uh, by the one trillion dollar economy but again i when you want to dr then drive a one trillion dollar economy you ask yourself um have you been able to put in place a one trillion dollar physical policy mm -hmm. because if you put in place a one trillion dollar monetary policy and you don't have a one trillion dollar physical policy then you are in for a shocker Okay, in as much as the central bank um, has not actually given like a direct policy guidelines on how much uh, recapitalization the banks are supposed to do this time around, but the uh, reactions have been trailing that development. Uh, I have spoken to some analysts and um, they have like a mixed grill of um, how it should go in terms of approach. Uh, some are saying that it should be more of incentives and not coercion. How should the CBN go about this? Do you agree with the whole coercion and incentives and based them approach? I think it both both has to come to play. You can't just use one, depending on which. Like I said, if you are if you are a tier one bank, then you must have a lot of incentive. If you are a tier, I mean tier one bank, you have to have a lot of coercion. If you are a tier one bank, then you, you are a tier two bank, then you need to begin to think about incentives. So it all depends on the. Uh, where where we are but i like some of the analysts have say um it's not recapitalization that definitely make 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 the bank stronger it's the strategy behind the recapitalization because um if you recapitalize do you have the monetary uh, policy to or do you have the tool to monitor this recapitalization or do you have the capital human capital to make sure that you drive this recapitalization because this will involve a lot of liquidity in the system. Mm. And again, you remember in, in, in when we did the first recapitalization, we saw a lot of banks came in there. At that time, was, the CBN governor, then now governor of Anambra State, Chief Masolo, you said it would be typical for any Nigerian bank to fail. Mm. Uh, but um, it didn't take long <laughs> after the recapitalization. Yeah. We saw a lot of banks. Um, 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 went out, and that was due to 
lack of human capacity to monitor the type of liquidity and risks that some of these banks were taking at that time. So if, you, if you're talking about recapitalizing the bank, how much human capacity have you developed as a regulator and how much, physical, how much um, capacity, human capacity has you also developed as a, as, as, as a money deposit bank to manage the kind of liquidity that is coming mm -hmm. into the system? So you're talking about liquidity. Before I move on to my next question, I just want to analyze some of, some things you said in passing. Uh, when we did uh, the last recapitalization 19 years ago with um, some banks failing and um, most banks uh, were exposed as per their weaknesses and all of that. Do you see that plain um, this time around? Uh, would this new capitalization show us exactly the true picture of what the commercial banks and deposit money banks are really doing in terms of um, our strength? Just in the pictures are there to show if you follow their earnings. All right. So you, you, you could see that's why we, we, we categorize the banks tier one, tier two banks now. Mm -hmm. Because even in the tier two banks, you have a super, what I call super tier two banks that are beginning to compete favorable with the tier one banks. So um, it depends on, on, on where you are mm -hmm. and um, what, what you are trying to achieve. Uh, for me, I, I, I think. Um, when you talk about that, I, I, I think the banks have really drive the Nigeria economy um, thus far. They've been one of those resistant, resistant uh, um, sector that we have seen in the Nigerian economy. Despite the various challenges, they still turn in good profit, they still turn in good earnings, they still um, 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 pay good dividend to their shareholders. Uh, of recent, most of them have even hiked their, their interim dividend by almost 45%. To the shareholders, so definitely you, you will see that the banks have really lived up to the expectation, whether in tier one or tier two. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the challenge with Nigerian banks will not only be that of um, that of uh, uh, um, um, liquidity going you know, or recapitalization, like you said in your report. Yeah. Recapitalization might not be a problem for the Nigerian banks, and I still see it. I it, 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 the words that will happen, you see, and uh, re-strategizing, like I said, um, uh, 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 incentive, whereby you might begin to see merger, and you see collation, whereby you begin to see um, maybe some big, bigger banks outside the shop of this country begin to take stake in the tier one bank mm. also. So the, all this will come to play, but as it stands now, I think um, by virtue of the results, you know mm. uh, that the Nigerian banks, are they are stronger. And if you do a, a stress test today, and like the CBN governor alluded to, that the banks are not having any financial crisis, but they are looking towards building a one trillion dollar economy, which they think that the bank should play a Absolutely. significant role in yeah. building that. And if they have to do that, then their liquidity must be high, especially via and via the, the, the exchange rate as it stands now. All right, let me share more reactions that I got with you. Some have said that the CBN can use um, prudential guidelines to strengthen tiered arrangement. They said that the Apex Bank can also use differential cash reserve requirement and preferential participation in the Forex market for well-capitalized banks as some of the incentives. Do you foresee challenges for some banks and what um, direct impact would it put on the capital market? Well, for the capital market, I think the capital market will be the most beneficial if this um, steam comes to true, like what you saw in, in 2004, uh, um, driving the, that when they came to, to the recapitalization, actually brought a lot of Nigerians into the capital market. And that could also be great, especially um, bringing young Nigerians into the capital market if this policy starts and um, most of the bank have to re recapitalize. In terms of um, the policy statement, where well, some analysts are saying about using your cash reserve system, using your uh, um, participation in the FX market, uh, assessing the CBN windows and all that could be some of the criteria of policy to use to, to know um, incentive for these banks. I don't think um, that would be a challenge. Like, But like I said, it could be something that the CBM are working at. But uh, from where I'm standing now, uh, I don't think it would be any challenge, especially even for the tier two bank to raise capital to the tune that what the CBN. And I think in the coming days, the discussion will be out. We'll know what um, the CBN, what is going to be the minimum capital uh, requirement of the Nigerian banks. And not to forget that most of the tier, tier one banks, even some tier two banks have 
are now having subsidiary outside the shore of this country, mm -hmm. and not just in this country, but in larger financial uh, 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 cities of the world, like London, like the uh, uh, France, like uh, also in, in, in New York. And so they are really expanding and uh, they are playing their role in the, in the global economy. So I, that's why I think it will not be a challenge for them to attract the kind of capital they need to build on their capital base, especially with the kind of opportunity that are much in Nigeria. All right, before we move into uh, some other th um, things that the CBN is um, talking about or is actually planning, you talked about banks, um, you know, branching out to uh, the sh outside the shores of the country, New York, uh, London, and all of that. In recent times, we've been seeing lots of um, uh, banks uh, uh, forming parent companies and all of that. I just want to get your reactions concerning that. And Justin, you know, the, 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 the world has gone to become a one, one shop one shop business and they call it one shop place so mm -hmm. the banks are not um, uh, um, um, don't want to be left out especially with the advent of the fintech um, side of the economy so what the banks are doing now is to diversify into holding structures mm -hmm. like it's done globally um, JP Morgan has been holding this structure so most of these banks have holding structure. And so Nigerian banks are beginning to take opportunity of that also to build holding structure. And I think it's good. Um, but again, my I, I, my challenge is also in the area of monetary. But thank God what the CBN have done. The CBN is not interested in the award they are doing in the holding structure because the banks now become part of the holding structure. But the CBN is key about what the banks are bringing into the holding structure uh, uh, finance, and that is key for me. The CBN have refused, even after the bank has said, look, we are not holding complete. The CBN is still having a grip on the banking sector, still have to, to edit, you have to check their books, you have to know what, whether what they're saying is right. So I think it's a good development in the long run, because that's what the best global practice these days. Yeah, every bank wants to become a one-shop center, and I think uh, Nigerian banks should not be left out. And that is why we think there's so much opportunities in if the bank will have to recapitalize the kind of opportunity they will drive, especially from the foreign uh, uh, exchange market, will be very huge because we have begin to see a lot of foreign investors coming in and wanting to stick a stake in this bank, especially in their holding companies that the fintech, mm -hmm. uh, the fintech companies will want to come here, especially because of also a larger population of youth and also the, 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 the lack of penetration that mm -hmm. we have having financial inclusion. So they come in, bring in the products, you could begin to see a lot of penetration. So there's a huge opportunity in that space. And I think mm -hmm. uh, that's why the banks don't want to be left out. That's why they are forming holding companies. All right, just before we run off now, the Central Bank of Nigeria says it will freeze accounts without a bank verification number, BVN, or National Identification Number, NIN, from April 2024. According to the bank, a BVN or NIN verification will be conducted shortly, adding that the move is part of its efforts to promote financial system stability and strengthen the Know Your Customer KYC procedures in financial institution what are your thoughts, Mota? Because right now, I thought by now, everyone would have been linked to the BVN platform as it is. Yeah, according to the um, CBN, uh, I think one publication have it that we have about 45 million Nigerians with that BVM, and I was shocked. But again, I'm looking at it. Some of these Nigerians might be Nigerian the diaspora since mm. the last time they opened an account in Nigeria, they've not been here. Uh, also, could be as a result of um, uh, passing, out, uh, passing on. Uh, maybe some of them are late now. We don't have a better register to the time. Right. So, uh, I don't think any banks, again, are doing businesses in Nigeria. Mm. You can transact any account in Nigeria without a PVM, especially when you, have, when you want to transact. To say you, mm. you own an account, yes, definitely. When you own an account that is not linked to a PVM, when you get to the bank, the bank will make sure they link that account to the BBM before you have any transaction. I think the major problem is from the wallet area, okay. the kind of wallet coming. And this has to do with fintech. 
Most mm. of them have not been able to transit that session of linking their customers with the BVM. Even in the Kenya Electricity Assistance now have already linked their customers with their BVM, mm -hmm. their customer NIN to their prepaid meter. So definitely, I, 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 I'm surprised that the CBN is trying to rule and sanctions and measures. I think more or less that most of those accounts could be what I just said. Um, will happen. So what we need to do is to reach out to some of these accounts old and I know that sustain what current status are in those accounts. That could be what we should do then just putting the whole banking sector into a panic mode. All right, thank you so much, Bokta. Thanks for all of the useful insights that you have shared on the show for today. We do appreciate them. Thank you, Justin, for having me. Good morning. All right, and that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin. Academia Business Insight will return to your screen same time. Many thanks for being there. Bye for now.